Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. In today's video we are going to be showing you how to build a, an advanced train here in Stormworks. Uh, we'll go over the components that we need along how to pop them and wire them up uh, to go ahead and make your own train. Uh, so with that all said, uh, let's get started. So to start things off with, we're here at the Komodo terminal on the um, Mega Island itself. I'm just going to start by going into the workbench itself. Now you can see in front of me we do have a little base that's already been made uh, nothing on it at the moment just a simple base now to start with the first thing we need to do obviously is design your base or design your your train now for the purpose of the tutorial we are going to be doing a very simple design uh, it's just meant to show you the components and how to wire them up and how to actually make a train uh, operate and then you to go ahead and get creative and design your own train at the end so in essence we just want to give you the tools to be able to go and do it now as you see as I said we have the base down the next part we need to go ahead and do is actually add the wheels for the train itself so we go ahead we grab the wheel assemblies now you can see on the right hand side we have obviously the description of it we have the properties um there's also the inputs and outputs so there's a brake input so a number value between zero and one zero would mean the brakes are just not enabled and then a value of one would mean the brakes are on uh, logic outputs we have the wheel slip so if the wheels are slipping on the track that will then send out an on signal and then we also have the power connection now obviously if you're in advanced you would have to pipe it to that and if you're in uh, basic or normal mode then you would just wire it to that connection so we'll go ahead we we'll grab it we're going to place two down for this train for this tutorial as you can see um, when you're placing them down they have little arrows underneath them this will indicate which way it goes so if you were to give it obviously a positive value it would go forward and vice versa so we're just going to place one down over there and we're going to do the same at the back just over here so we've got two placed down. Now you can see when we place them down, it's gone ahead and placed a little block just over here. Above that block is going to be where you can put the actual connection for it. either a pipe or an engine or whatever you want, you can go and place that. Easiest way to find that is find the middle of the actual um, wheel itself and then move to the center and you can see we found it here. Fantastic, so that's done. Uh, the next thing obviously for this tutorial, we'll just need a way to get onto the actual train. So I'm just gonna go and put some simple ladder pieces just here in the front of the train, and just so we can climb up onto it. Now you don't have to do that, it's really up to you. I'm just putting it there so we can get up on it. Now the next thing is actually sorting out the engines. Now, there's obviously different ways in how you can go around doing this. You can use your diesel engines, you could use electric engines, you could use jet engines. It's really up to you and what type of train you're building. Now, I specifically usually recommend using electric engines. Now, the purpose why is because then you don't have to mess around with clutches and gearbox when you want to go forwards or backwards. Electric engines, as you guys should know already, um, they can go forwards or backwards depending on either you're giving a one or minus one signal. Uh, there is no clutches involved. There's no gearboxes involved. It's just literally electric engines and that's all you need. Now, I found that for these trains, uh, a really good way to start with is just to use the small electric engines to get started. You only need two of them. Um, so I'm just going to place one here and place another one there. If you want, you could use one medium one instead of two small ones, uh, but the small ones do produce a really good output and they actually bring the train quite fast. So I recommend using the small ones. Now, obviously you'll need batteries to go ahead and power those those uh, two small electric motors. Now you can obviously use as many batteries as you want, small, big, large, it's up to you. I usually recommend using one large one. So we're just gonna place one large one just over here and that's gonna power two electric engines. Now obviously we need to recharge that. So in order to recharge that, I like to use two diesel engines. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the two diesel engines. Now they're just over here. Now these usually provide more than enough power to actually power one large battery. Um, so what we'll do is you'll see here, I'm just gonna switch them and place them just like this. And then in the center over here is how we're gonna connect it up. Now I've gone through a tutorial, obviously, uh, we've done tutorials on how to set up engines. So I'm just gonna quickly run through it. If you're struggling a bit, uh, go check out my video on setting up advanced engines here in Stormworks. Uh, so firstly, I'm just gonna do the power. Now the power, what I'm going to do is send it up into a gearbox. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a gearbox. Make sure this gearbox is facing the actual engine itself. And then from there on, we're just going to do another cross pipe like this. And then on top of that, we are gonna stick the generator. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using a medium sized generator and that should be producing enough power to charge that battery and keep us going without diminishing the power. Now, obviously because we're in advanced mode, we obviously need to connect the rest of this engine up. Uh, now, 
once again, for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm just gonna do a very, very simple uh, design where I'm literally just gonna connect the pipes up as quickly and as easily as possible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab our exhaust, place them on top of the exhaust outputs, just like that. And then we have fuel, we have coolant and coolant out, and we also need to take care of our air. So what I'm going to do is for the actual cooling, we're just gonna go out like so, and I'm just gonna go and put some um, radiators on there. So we'll just do that. And then like that, and then we'll go ahead and grab our radiator, which should be somewhere down here. There we are. See if I can angle it just right here. Fantastic, and we'll do the same on the other side. If you need a little bit more performance out of these, I usually recommend adding a water uh, tank to it, like a very small water tank. So just go ahead and grab the little fluid tank over here and adding a making it water. Uh, that way it usually works quite well. But once again, you'll play around with it. If it's overheating, then you can, you can reduce it down a bit. Uh, it's really up to you. I'm just gonna have to build this up just a bit, just so we can place down our radiator. So, that should be fine, and I think we should be able to place our radiator on top of that. Fantastic. Great, so the next thing we have to do is obviously our air. Air is quite simple. You can just go ahead and use your fluid ports, and then that's air taken care of on either side. And then lastly is we have the fuel. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and place down two large fuel tanks. I usually recommend placing a large fuel tank underneath here uh, and filling that up with diesel. However, once again, it's up to you. You can play around with it and, until you find what works for you. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, as always, I'm just going to do a simple tank just underneath it, uh, just over here, and we'll get it connected up to the actual engine because we won't be running these for long periods of time. So ahead, go ahead, connect that up to there, and we'll do the same for the front engine. Just connecting it up, just like so. And then that takes care of all our piping and all the controls for these. You can even go ahead and send this up to 100 RPS, just like that. Change the gearbox to a one, two, three, done. Now the reason why we're doing a one, two, three is that means that's actually generating more power out of that generator. Pretty simple, the diesel uh, fuel tanks are already set, so we don't have to worry about that. The next thing we need to do is obviously do a little control station for our um, train itself. Now, I usually recommend not using a pilot seat or helm. The reason why is because the train's not turning left and right, so you don't really have to worry about having easy access to controls. You could just use your simple, simple levers, which we are going to do for the purpose of this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab two levers, or throttle levers, should I rather say. Now we're going to place those down. I'm going to have one of them is going to be for the electric, if I can spell right, uh, electric engine. And that's going to be from a one to a minus one and the starting value is going to be zero. The second one we're going to have is going to be for our brakes. And that's going to be from zero to one and the start value is going to be one. So the brakes are automatically applied when we spawn this in. Pretty easy. We're also going to have another throttle lever just here in the center. This is going to be our throttle lever for the diesel engines. Now I usually recommend starting this off at a 0.2. It's really up to you. Uh, leave it at zero to start and then a 0.2 when it starts. Minimum value is zero, it's up to you. And then probably about a 30% sensitivity. And then for your electric engine, I usually recommend about 15% sensitivity. Obviously play with it. Uh, the reason why I do less sensitivity is that it's easier to control. Otherwise, as soon as you hit up, it's gonna go all the way up to like one and it's gonna shoot off. We want a little bit more slower response. Now, the next thing is obviously we'll need a push button for the starter. So I'm just gonna go place it down over here. And that's gonna be the starter for the diesel engine. So we can go ahead and write here, diesel starter. easy enough and then we can also put a indicator light now the indicator light that we're going to be putting down is going to indicate if we have wheel slip now I'll show you in a couple seconds how we could do that but we'll just place indicator light down and say wheel slip pretty simple pretty easy 
and that takes care of it for the components. We shouldn't need any other components for this build. This is the basic components that you'll need for a train. Obviously, if you were to go ahead and connect it up to different things, I usually recommend putting a electrical connector on a pivot in the front and the back of the train to connect to other trains. However, I'm not gonna get into that. It's pretty self-explanatory uh, and you should be able to see on other trains how to do that. Now, moving on to the logic part of the build. Now, as I said earlier, we have our electric, uh, our electric engine throttle, which we can simply go ahead and connect to our electrical motors just over here, very easy. We also have our brakes, so by standard they're on one, which means the brakes are engaged. We also have our throttle for our diesel engine, which we can go ahead and connect up. We then also have our starter, which is going to be for our diesel engines. Now, I would also recommend getting a couple of gauges up front, obviously to check your RPS, your temperature, the amount of fuel you have. Uh, but once again, for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to go ahead and add that in, uh, and we are not gonna connect up all, any of these gauges or levels or anything like that. Now, once we have that done, the last thing we're going to do is connect our wheel slip from both the wheels. Now, to connect it from both of them, we're going to be using a simple OR block. That means if either one of those wheels are slipping, it's going to send a signal through to us. So let's go ahead and find our OR block. There we are. We can go ahead, simply place that down over there, connect that up from there, connect it up to the other wheel and as I said if either of them are on or sending a signal it's going to go ahead and turn that on. Now as far as electricity is concerned pretty easy once again all we're going to be doing is taking our battery connecting our battery to all the components that need electricity. Once again I would usually recommend using a, a circuit breaker in between that and the circuit breaker is just going to be so that when the train is not used it will be off and it's not ever using any electricity and then when you want to you can just flip the circuit breaker and you could use it now that pretty much is about it for the controls and the logic and setting and piping and all that good stuff that should be more or less about it now obviously we'll have to go ahead and test this and you'll have to change it according to how heavy or how light your train is how big it is how small it is it's really up to you and you can get quite creative however this is the basic design i like to use for my trains however as i said there might be different ways of doing it uh, but this is the way I like to do it. Now we go ahead you can see it's spawned in we can go ahead and jump on it. First thing I want to do is actually double check my breakers on you can see it is definitely on we can go and get our engine started and see if they actually are working. So you can see now those are, are on they're working so that means we're constantly producing electricity for this. So this should consistently be able to recharge. Now, if we were to add a dial here, you would know that this is always full. Uh, and then what we do is we can just disengage our brakes, use our electrical engine, and you can now see we are going forward. Pretty simple. If for some reason we did want to cut our engine, we could still run on our we could still run on our actual electrical throt electrical engines only. So you can see the engines have now died. This will last for quite a while. I think it will probably get us all the way to the other side uh, before the battery would die. However, I usually recommend leaving the diesel engine running so you always have electricity. Now you can see that's only at 10% and we're doing a, not a bad speed. Uh, if we were to go ahead and bring that all the way up, you can see two electric engines are more than powerful enough to actually move a train along. Now, obviously, this is when you start adding a couple more cars on there and so on and so forth. It will start to get a little bit more slower. Uh, however, that's when I usually recommend adding more and more trains or even just using a medium sized generator, a medium sized electric engine instead of the small ones. Now, obviously, the last thing we didn't do is while we're moving along, if we wanted to do emergency stop, we would just go ahead, enable the brakes again, and you can see we've come to a stop. Now, if we wanted to test out to see if our wheel spin indicator light's working, we could bring this up to full throttle and then hit the brakes and we should, no, we can't. The brakes are too good. We need to bring up a little more speed uh, and see if we can try and get the wheels to slip a bit. So let's give it a full speed, pick up some speed, and then ours hit the, there we go. And you can see our wheel slip light has come on and now it's gone off because it stopped the wheel slip. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, about it, guys. There's not really much more to talk to you about. The design is very simple and very easy. Uh, it's a good way to always regenerate electricity uh, with the two diesel engines and using these small little electrical engines. The train goes pretty fast. Uh, these are the basic components that you will need. Um, as I said, you can always add some more dials and things onto here if you wanted to. It's really up to you at the end of the day on how advanced you want to get, get into it. Uh, but these are the basic 
the basic elements, designs, components, and wiring that you need for your uh, train itself. So yeah, that's pretty much about it. So then we'll go ahead and end today's video over there, guys. Uh, as always, comment below what you'd like to see in any future videos. Why there? Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to follow any of my upcoming content. And finally, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat entertaining and informative as always, and we'll see you in the next one.